In 1980, three out of four consumers of goods in the world were based here in the developed world. Within the next 10 years, three out of four consumers in the world of goods and services will be based in the developing world. Not here, there. That has huge implications for what happens. So now let me share with you some of my research because uh, this will inform how I want to describe the future as I see it for you. I'll just share with you how I did it, and you can take it. Uh, we can discuss it later. I focus on these 15 countries. These 15 countries are what I call the future 15, and these are the countries I think that are going to move the needle on global trends in consumption. How did I come up with this list? It's pretty simple, actually. I went through the Economist Intelligence Unit's database, and I looked for large countries, countries with populations more than 25 million, and small income, less than $10,000 per person per year. That was it. There were 80 countries in the list to begin with. They don't have data on some of the smaller African countries or some of the smaller Eastern European countries. But anyway, they had, uh, they had data on 78 countries, only 15 of which went through this filter. So that's how I got the list. This is where they're located. You'll see there's a lot of Asia, a little bit of Africa, a little bit of Latin America. And there's very few numbers I want you to pay attention to today, but here's one number I want you to pay attention to. 4,300. 4,300 is the population weighted GDP per capita of this group of 15 countries, right? So what does that mean? That means if you were to mash them all together and figure out what the average consumer of this group uh, earned, it would be about $4,300 a year. So that's the number. And by the way, I'm talking about an enormous population. This is 3.8 billion people that fit this category. 3.8 billion people. So 3.8 billion people at $4,300 of GDP per capita. That's the way to think about this. Now, I came up with a prior group because that's what they teach you in academia. You want to learn how to compare. And um, the prior group uh, will come up, there'll be some relevance later, but they were roughly similar in the year 2000 to where this group is today. Very similar, not identical, but very similar. Okay, so let me just dive into the big trends, the sparks that fly when convergence occurs between population and income. First one, when you put more money into someone's pocket, they consume more meat. I believe there's actually a point where this occurs at a trajectory shifting, needle moving uh, dynamic takes place. At roughly $5,000 of GDP per capita, what you see is animal protein consumption suddenly does a hockey stick. It goes up at a different rate. A meaningful increase per capita by the way, we're also having population boom, so keep that in mind. Goes up dramatically. Many of us in this room understand that protein consumption has tied to economic growth for a long time. This is a trend we can bank on. Over the last 50 years, protein consumption has risen by 450%. This is a trend you can bank on. People consume more protein. By the way, should it surprise any of us in this room that the Chinese came here and purchased Smithfield Foods a couple years ago, the largest pork processor in the world? No. And by the way, do you think that's the beginning or the end of a trend? Look at where China is. They just went through this tipping point a couple years ago. Shouldn't shock any of us. This is the beginning of a trend. More of this to follow.